Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. It's officially Christmas time. It's the best time of the year, no doubt about that. And it's a great time for you to sit with us and talk a little Cowboys football. I'm John Radigan. That's Nate Newton. This week, he may add a little ho, ho, ho before he <laughs> leans into the camera and says to you, let me tell you something. Ooh. Yeah, my God. Oh, this week, Nate, I don't want you to tell me something. I need you yeah. to tell me something. And I think all our viewers do, too. Look, eventually, I'm going to need you yeah. to tell me how the Cowboys can possibly win against a 10-4 and four team on the road after what we've seen. But first things first, Nate, how, how can the Cowboys look like they looked? Just like almost like a no-show in Buffalo. The, the thing about it, and this has been since the Jason Garrett era, I have been begging. I have been pleading. And over those years, we've maybe had one or two guys that came in here with a mindset and a built and a determination to stop the run. You go back into every game that has been the biggest and most important game to try to turn the page. And the run has destroyed us ever since, especially since starting in 2017. You go back and you check playoffs, guys running for 170, 200 yards, and it just continues to haunt us. We lose Hankins and like our whole world fell apart. Right. Uh, and, and that cannot happen. Uh, now you finna face a Miami team that's fourth in the league, 139 yard, 139 yards a game, 5.2 or 5.7 yards per carry. This is not gonna work. Everybody's telling me, hey, we never lose two games in a row. Yeah, but you never run up against teams that rush the ball with a determination like the like the Buffalo team did, and like what Miami would do to us if we're not careful. Okay, and that's the interesting part of it, Nate. My um, our Buffalo is not a rushing team, right? It's not. They got that big, strong statue of a quarterback back there. He only threw the ball like eight times or something. Yeah, fifteen times. The thing, yeah, the thing that let, let let me break it down to you. Let let me really tell you something. I did a couple of shows, and I I, I try not to compare. Teams. I mean, every team is its own entity. Uh, but it's certain things that you have to have. It's a certain mentality that you have to have to be successful. People are saying, what is the difference between the road games and the home games? And I and I'm and I'm gonna tell you now. Tell me. This is this is where I, I tell fans. You can make up what you want. You can go to the media and let them make it up however they want. I'm telling you from what I've seen, what I know, and what I have been a part of. When you become a team that truly says we are a dominant team, we are a good to great team, now, it doesn't matter where you play. Eric Williams, Charles Haley, Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith, Tony Tolbert, Larry Allen, Ken Norton, James Washington, Darren 
Woodson, Deion Sanders. It did not matter. Nate the stadium Newton. they played in. We were coming to get you. It didn't matter with whether it was raining, whether it was cold, whether you had uh, Bryant Young, Dana Stubblefield, Reggie White, uh, the great Lawrence Taylor. We were coming to get you. It's called players who don't give a damn. It is called the ultimate alpha male. It is called I'm going to hike my leg in your yard and urinate <laughs> in your grass. That is the difference. Oh, man. That is the difference. Yeah. Players yeah. that don't care where you at. When we went on the road back then, Jimmy Johnson had a mantra, by 100 or by one point, we win the game and come home. We play smart football and come home. We play clean football and we come home. No dumb penalties. No bad plays. We limited the playbook so we would not have bad plays. We executed the plays that we know that we can run against any defense. That is what is missing, Rad. Now, everybody else okay. will make up every kind of excuse in the world. Well, maybe it's the fans. Maybe it's the fast feel. Maybe it's <laughs> this. Maybe it's that. How about being smart, playing hard, and doing your job? All right, so the, that begs the question, is this team good enough to be that? Or is it, so in other words, is it just a mental thing about being that alpha male and lifting your leg? Or maybe are there some, you know, some talent deficiencies, some physical deficiencies that prohibit this team from being that good? You know what? Uh, I'm beginning to believe that it's, it's, it's physical. Yeah. Uh, you can't continue every time to play a run team a team that has the ability to run and is determined to run. And you, you can't keep saying it's the eye candy. Uh, we were over aggressive. How are you over aggressive to the tune of 266 yards? Yeah. No. Nah. Ain't somebody got to stop and say, hey, man, let's do a Niagara. Let's flush this down the drain. Let's, let's, let's get rid yeah. of this. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Thanks to yeah. Niagara, it's responsive. I'm just trying to be, be that guy and throw that in there. I appreciate that. That was well done. <laughs> Plus, they were up there right by Niagara Falls, which is a nice tie-in. Oh, yeah. So, hey, see what I'm saying? Right, that was sweet, though, Rand. That was sweet, that's why man. they pay me the big bucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, this team. How can you not address? And they tried with Mozzie. They tried. This kid has not uh, lived up to the billing. I'm not saying he can't. But as of mm -hmm. right now, he's not a valuable threat. And 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 it's so many things that hurt them. You 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 come up, curse come up with a with another penalty that cost us points. Sam Williams, great athlete, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. every game. He do two great things, but is he gonna do something to cost us points? Javon Curse. It ain't been a game that we've played that we've played in great against great competition where he's not cost us points. Mm -hmm. That that is that is not. You know, I, I did a show last night for the Cowboys, and I told him Troy me just come in and say, "All right." Load left or I right, 36 this or 36 that, we're going to hard count him. And he was stopped before we walk out of the huddle. Nate, hard count <laughs> on three. Because I was that guy. If anybody was going to jump, I was going to yeah. be that guy. Yeah. And so, Sam Williams, if you get a free run at the center, lay out. Don't lay out. Some people you just have to. Give us a, a hug. Give a squeeze. Hey, Curse, yeah. we, we can't have it today. 
We can't have a, 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 a bad play. Now, Tank, Tank, uh, Demarcus Lawrence, I'm not calling his name because he normally don't make those boo-boo plays like yeah. that. Yeah. So, but I'm talking about guys that are repeatedly uh, are, are offenders, man. If, if we, if, if, you know, if, 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 if this was a, a DUI, man, these guys would be, uh, they'd be throwing away the key on these cats, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm just being honest. You have to, when you go on the road, it's several things have to happen. Number one, you have to take your run game. You have to take your run game. That is the stabilizer to everything. Number two, you have to have your defense playing lights out. We can't, you can't give up any big plays on the road. It, they're too hard to recover. And number three, your special teams have to show up. We failed in all three phases. No run game. Yeah. Even though Tony looked he good, the few plays yeah. he had, no run game. Defense got gashed. You know, they just told me the other night, I was I was uh, just scanning through the weather. They told me the other night they finally had a traffic jam and they stopped everything from moving. I'm like, oh, they finally stopped the running? It's like these yeah. kids, the way they was running on it was like just back in the COVID days and everybody was running up and down the highway at 95 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm just saying that then we we made that bad play on special teams and it cost us. It cost us. Well, okay, with with regard to that one, Nate. Now, obviously, Sam Williams was very close to blocking that punt too. What's the you know, what's the deal there? What do you I mean, like, you don't that is one. And everybody's been on him. But that's one where I'm going, man, the dude was so close. I don't know that you back off. What do you do? What's the play there? I mean, obviously the play is make sure you block it, and then you don't get called for roughing. I, re- I reckon just on the road is three and four. Yeah. <laughs> how close do we need to get? Because if – if I'm going to tell you how close it is. Because if the Cowboys were to beat Buffalo or the Cowboys were to beat the Cardinals – then the loss for Philly would have really meant something. Yeah. Now everybody's still hoping and dreaming that Philly yeah. continue to lose so we can yeah. cripple our way into the playoffs. Yeah. I, and I meant what I said. We can just half get ourselves into the playoffs. Right. That don't yeah. work. No. That don't work. No. How close no. is it? Don't do it. Yeah. Don't Don't even rush. The rest of the team was on a hold up. The coach believed in you so much that he said, if you can get in there and block that, we need for you to block it. So it'll help turn the game around. He did. He didn't turn the game around. He just poured more salt into the wound. See, Rad, as a football player, even a guy that never blocked punts, we are taught to lay out on the foot. So the worst, the best thing can happen is that kicker kicks it, kicks it and gets it off. Now his feet up and you slide up under. And the worst thing can happen is uh, you hit that foot and it's five yards. Yeah. Come on now. I mean. Yeah. Don't. And I'm telling you, don't be one of the guys because you keep excusing the bad. He's a great right. athlete. Well, yeah. I, I, I'll go even further. We don't have that situation if he don't run down the quarterback on third down. Remember? Yeah. This guy That's was trying right. to go sure. for a first down. Sam Williams closes yeah. it and shuts it down. Yeah. yeah. So now he got a chance to have back-to-back great plays. One great play to st- get the punt. One bad play to get them points. Yeah. That's how close yeah, that it was, is. No, that, but that was way worse, right? Yes. I mean, that's the, the scales tip dramatically yes. at that point in the game, no yes. doubt. You mentioned, too, you got to be able to run the ball yourselves. Cowboys didn't do that in part. And again, here I am with the excuses again. Zach Martin was out. It looks like he'll be back. Um is that enough to um, revitalize the run game this week? If you tell me that the Cowboys are going to only give up maybe 101 yards rushing on their own, if you tell me that our defense only going to give up maybe 100 yards rushing, Zach Martin on the other end may be enough. But this, 
You know, everybody wants to say it fell apart because of Zach Martin. It did not fall apart because the offense couldn't uh, generate anything. This, these team, th- th- our offense, we try to get a lead so we can play to the strength of our defense. But our defense has to get turnovers so our offense can continue to let them sit on the bench. It still works hand in hand. Even in losses and even in wins, you get the turnover, we drive the ball. You we get we drive the ball, we score, we give you a lead, you you rush, you rush, you get pressures, you get sacks. It this is what bothers me is we, we can make all these excuses and then it becomes a one and done situation in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What excuses do you have when you're home in the second round every year? Okay. I'm going to give you the excuses. We couldn't stop the run. We couldn't get a running game. So, if that's been the excuse every year, you have to address it during the offseason. They tried with Mozzie. They they're, did a better job with keeping the offensive line healthy. But we have an older offensive line, so our yeah. depth is not there. <laughs> you know, when, you know, uh, TJ Bass has not played enough uh, to just have a great rhythm. Uh, uh, Adoga is there. Uh, Austin Freeman is is not played enough to make a difference. Steele is coming off of a major surgery, uh, which I think he should have been coming back by the eighth game of the year. You know, and people say, "Well, Nate, you crazy? Well, who was going to play? Well, you're going to play Austin Richards. You're going to play a young guy." And so, uh, but they say we can't lose this season. I agree. We can't lose this season. So uh, you're doing what you're doing, but it, it doesn't erase the same issues you've had over the last 10 years. When we play the biggest of plays, that this the, and the reason I keep saying this was a big game, you heard me say six weeks ago, uh, Rad, that we needed to win six in a row. Yeah, And the reason I said that is because you beat Philadelphia to tie it up. And that's what I was thinking. Okay, if everything works right, if you keep winning, Dallas, you tie this up. Then the next week, you go face what I think is a good quarterback, a, a potentially great quarterback, if he can get out his own way in Josh Allen. Yep. And a great defense, I thought, and it showed. And a decent run game. And you going on the road where the elements can be a little bit difficult. Now that is where I say, are you going to hike your leg? Are you just going to squat like a puppy and continue to (laughs) do it that way? Okay, so we know the results on that. So now you have another week to get the hackles up on your back of your neck, face it up, tail straight in the air. How are you going to do it this week? We'll see. Yeah. But now it, you mentioned the, the Miami uh, run game and, and the efficiency and the success of that run game over five yards a carry all season long. Uh, and yet and they kind of run on the perimeters a little bit more, yes. Nate. How much does that change? And again, it, it doesn't look like Hankins will be back this week. But so does that change the way you approach it defensively, uh, trying to stop that run if they're going to you know, take it outside a little bit more? Thanks to NFL stats, ESPN, uh, whoever else, NFL, whoever, it, it didn't matter. They got eight yards one way. They got uh, five yards the other way. They got four yards this way. It didn't matter way uh, James Cook, who was virtually unknown, now he's known, yeah. thanks to the Dallas yeah. Cowboys, uh, yeah. He ran any and everywhere he wanted to go. And, and I'm telling you, they said they saw him out there on one of B- Buffalo major highways, man, <laughs> still running. <laughs> I mean, this, this dude ain't been stopped yet, bro. <laughs> wow. I mean, come on, this dude was in college, man. And, and, yeah. and didn't get them many yards. He outrushed us, no, no. outgained us. Yeah. 
So yeah, 167 or something like that by yeah. himself. And heck, he was with the Lions for years. I didn't even know him then. <laughs> hey, man. I'm a Lions hey. fan. I'm like, who is that dude? <laughs> so yeah, he he had a breakout game, no doubt. Um, without uh, so uh, when I when I read and hear what Coach McCarthy says about Mozzie, because we have to we have to count on him again. He got his first start last week. You've mentioned him already once. He'll start almost for sure again this week. Um, coach says that it is uh, he's okay with his gaps and his reads. It's pad level uh, that they're a little concerned about. Uh, break that down. So explain that more in layman's terms for me. What about his pad level is wrong? Well, it's all about bending your hips and bending your knees. Low man wins. It's called leverage. Uh, when you play up high, you don't have no strength. You just, you up. It's like, you know, only thing that can play up high and survive is a palm tree. They built because their <laughs> roots, if you have a 10 foot palm tree, they got 10 foot of roots in the ground. Yeah. So, yeah. but man only had no, have no roots in the ground. So when you get up high and the other guys in your chest, they can control the majority of your body so they can push you wherever they want. If you get down low, get your hands inside, now it becomes a, a vicious struggle about who's got better hand placement and, and, and center of gravity. So it's all about center of gravity. If he can't get low, but the thing about it, once he get low, will he fire off the ball? Or will he be laid off the ball? When he get when he finally get that done, will he make the right read? When the guy step right, will he step, you know, step in accordance with the guy? So this guy got a lot to work on. Yeah. But time is running out. You don't wanna yeah. you don't wanna stumble in December. The mm-hmm. worst you can be is two and two in December. You're one, you're one and over, I mean oh and one right now. The worst you wanna be in December is two and two. And and and, and we behind the eight ball. Uh and you you're playing a team that's eerily built like you are. Uh, def- offensively, Miami wants to get a lead. Mm-hmm. And they defense want to rush the pack. They got 48 sacks. They got yep. four guys with four or five sacks, and they got three guys with seven sacks. They got a kid called Wilkinson, number 94. You know, oh, my God. This guy, this guy can dance, and he's on the inside. This guy can dance to the best of them. You know, they got Bradley Chubb, I think, got about nine. I mean, what you going to do? Yeah, they coming to get you. If you get down, they coming to get you, bro. The, the, yeah. the, the big dogs are hunting. Yeah, yeah. They got a they got a funny little coach too. Uh, you know, a back in the day. Yeah, but right, he is, and and that's what it takes, isn't it? Right. I mean, back in the day, and look, obviously, so many coaches were not great players. They played somewhere, but they were yeah. not great players. In fact, often the best players can't coach very well right. because they'd just be like, "Well, do what I did." Well, we can't. We're not right. you, right? So, so, but this guy, uh, you know, does it surprise you that he was even, you know, accepted from the get go just because he's such, he's so unique, he's so different from other NFL you know coaches? That dude you see, one ugly enough, fat enough, rough looking enough to even be a coach. You had to look at this dude like, man, you can't lead no men not looking like this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it looks don't matter, baby. No, it's what's in no. your head and what you can get Up your here. players yeah. to believe. Yeah. He got a good rapport with his players. He got his players believing with that what he's gonna put them in position to be successful. That's all players are looking for is guys that can put a system in place that allows them to be successful. And this thing all starts with uh Cheetah, you know, it all starts with uh Tyreek. I mean, once yeah. he get going, it, it opens up the world because then Waddle yeah. gets to do his thing. And now how you, you cannot – they you cannot stack the box. You can't uh. stack the box against the Miami Dolphins. You can't – I'm going to stop the run game against the Miami – you can't because you, you don't have nobody that can consistently one-on-one deal with Tariq. No one in the league – can consistently wow. deal with this guy one yeah. on one. So you're gonna have to disguise your coverages. You got to have your help here and there, and then Waddle break loose. They got decent tight ends. They got two lightning fast, powerful running backs. One kid got 20 touchdowns. Um, I call him Monster. It is, it, it ain't his real name, Mozart or whatever his name. Yeah, he, he's yeah. he's a beast. Uh, 
Let me get the kid name right. Let me look here. Let me look here. Let me look here. Uh, running back, Raheem Mostert. The dude is a beast. Yeah. yeah. Dude got 20 touchdowns. That's more than yeah. some teams got uh, all together rushing. Yeah. I mean, he got 20 rushing. got to be more come than the on. Patriots have, yeah. Man, come on, man. Sorry. This, yeah. this dude is so unique. And then the guy that backs him up, uh, A-Tran, A-Tran. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. This dude averaged almost seven yards a carry. Uh, this dude, coach, uh, coaches, this coach here, this offense with this coach, Mike Daniels, he's yeah. the closest thing to an a, a all Madden game that you can get. Right. I mean, with his formations, with his movement, uh, uh, the way they do things, uh, you know, everybody, well, they have, and I, I, I love our media. Ah, they haven't beat any team that's got over 500 record. They haven't beat any team that's over 500 record. I say, y'all, and then, but y'all want to, well, shouldn't y'all put on the other side of that plate is, but the Cowboys ain't really stopped a real rushing team or a team that's determined to rush, you know. Or a team on the road. Right? Man, and, and yeah. my thing is, and this is and this is what I learned from Coach Landry, Coach Johnson and all great players. Take care of your own home. Yeah. Take care of your, uh, fix your own home. They they trying to find chinks in Miami armor, but you won't fix your own home. You know, so, you know, you can turn on any station anywhere uh, within 200 mile radius and, and they'll be trying to, they'll be trying to fix Miami. Miami is the same, got the same record we have. Uh, do we right. are we ten and four? They ten and three. So they they got both know, ten and four. Yeah, both ten and four. Yeah. So, I mean, their numbers are better than our numbers. Their their numbers. They you know I you know on the road and and at home their numbers are better than ours. So yeah, yeah. They got at least so, ten plays of over sixty yards. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so is um. Is Armazi's, uh, you know, the the things he needs to learn? I don't even want to call them deficiencies. He just hadn't learned it all yet. That's is that correctable enough in a week? If if he wants to, okay. if he wants it to be. See, I, I'm through talking about oh Mike McCarthy, oh the, you know the uh, the the defensive coordinator Dan Quinn, Dan oh, Quinn DQ yeah. No no no, I, I am through with that. That pro football whatever had him missing 17 tackles. Coach uh, McCarthy had him missing 12 tackles. You mean to tell wow. me that Dan Quinn got a Relay the thing from the press box. Come down there on the side and, and then tell the players what to do. Then he got to run out there on, fi- on the field and make the tackle too. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, that's too much. Don't you think he'll be tired? Yeah. Then he got to run back lot. up yeah. to the press box, assess the defense, assess the offense, run back down, tell them yeah. to play and make the tackle. Come on, man. Yeah, I don't want to hear it. I, I am through. Yeah. This, this is on the players. Yeah. This ain't on no coaches, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. now offensively, you can kind of, you know, get at Coach uh, McCarthy a little bit. You know, you could have ran a little bit more. Are they telling me that, hey, they could have put an extra guy in the box to stop the bleeding and stop the running? They could have put an extra guy in the box. Man, stop. Yeah. Stop. By the time they would have put a guy in the box, okay, yeah, they, they would have, instead of rushing for 266 yards, they'd have rushed for 200. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, fine. And Tra- and Trayvon Diggs would have had much bigger numbers, that, yeah. right? I mean, <laughs> something's got to give, yeah, right? Because you couldn't – they threw only, only, only when they thought they had to. And yeah. they had to be forced to do it then. Because we were third yeah. and six, they was getting almost seven yards of carry in the, th- in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So if it was third and six, they still yeah. could run the ball. Yeah. With a like yard a short down. That's short yardage, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's short yardage. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so uh, a bad thing also happened after the game where fans, and I get it, you know more than any of us how fans in this town are, mm. but fans put out a couple of uh, player addresses and a couple of player uh, phone numbers. Man, come, first of all, come on, fans. Stop that. That's ridiculous. Let me let me say this to the fans. Uh, 
Don't don't make it that personal because right when you do that, you bring in you bring in the the law, and you bring yep. in, it ain't gonna just be the local law. I'm yeah. talking into my mic so you can hear me. It just won't Thank be the you. local law. Let me tell law. you something. Yeah. It'll be the FBI. And 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 you won't be like the guy in Philadelphia the next week. You're sitting up in the press box eating um eating, you know, corn chips yeah. and Doritos yeah, and all that. Yeah. It it'll be a little bit difficult for, different from you, ma'am and sir. So don't, you know, it's, don't cheer for them, cheer for them, hate them in the stands. Kill them on Twitter, kill them on X, but leave those phone numbers and leave those house addresses alone because it will not favor you in the end. That's great. No, that's really true. And it's great. And it's I just don't I think it's one of the problems that we've had with the way the game has gone with regard to uh, fantasy as much as anything, but also probably the video games, too. Now, and now, it, it dehumanizes is, now, people John, even more. John, You're people. John, I love you. Let me tell you what has happened. We football, basketball, baseball, and all sports started as an entertainment. Right. And now it's become a, a obsession. Is I got that right? Yeah. And, and on top of that, on top of what you just said, now people are betting their houses on this stuff. Yeah. Their lives are dependent on it. Good They're point. wagering it, so I I understand. You know, you don't you don't start up there and, and and base your whole Christmas funds on what right, the Cowboys right. gonna do, and, and Mama want gifts for babies, and you don't sit out there and bet it all on the Cowboys. Yeah, be smart. Yeah. I'm not telling you not to bet, and I'm not telling you yeah. not to be excited about the cow. Been a Cowboy since I was 10, 11 years old. I'm 62 years old, but I am not finna lose my mind. No, on, or on my whether, money. Yeah, on whether Sam Williams yeah. or Javon Kurtz going to do the right thing in a big game. Nah, it's no, sir. Yeah. So be yeah. careful how you loved, love the Cowboys. Buy a jersey every now and then. Buy a hat every now and then. Go to a game every now and then. But don't, it's not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal. I, 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 I promise you, it's not that big a deal. Man, that's I, I love that. That's great perspective. Now, uh, it's we mentioned it at the top. It's Christmas week. Um, how, how tough is it? Especially, you know, you were going through it with little kids and Christmas and getting ready for big games and all that stuff. This year, the game is actually on Christmas Eve, which means you know at least the fellas will be back in time for Christmas morning. But uh, but I just wonder if you can put in perspective how tough a week like this is to really just completely focus on football, especially when you have a young family. It's, it, it's easy when you're is at it? work, love on your team. Merry Christmas. Yeah. When you're at home, spend that time. Go home after practice. Don't lollygag. When you get your treatment or whatever, go home, spend time with the kids. And that's what I learned. Spend time with the kids. Wake up that morning just a little bit early. Kids out. Wake them up. Eat breakfast with them. Boom. Go to work. It's easy. Yeah. It just depends yeah. on if you got your priorities right. At first, I didn't have my priorities right. But then I learned, okay, no, nah, don't make this difficult. Now you wake up yeah. Christmas Eve, you, you know, you 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 in you in uh, Miami? You know what? You got a million dollars. Go on and fly the family down. What's up? Sure. Fly them down, and, yeah. and if they can get out that <laughs> night, they could not the hook. They, 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 they hook on this, and they make a fly out the next day. So you know, yeah. but hey, but you ain't got to come back either. You can just stay there, right. and uh, you can't get hurt. But you can stay there, yep. have Christmas in Miami. I either get back yep. on the plane, and your kids wake up. Hey, the real Santa Claus is home. Daddy, yeah. that's who the real Santa Claus is. Yeah. Daddy's going to make it happen. Oh, man, don't ruin it for our little kids watching. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you who Santa, you know, like I just tell my kid, the black of claws is here, baby. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. Uh, that's also good perspective. So give me then, let's finish this up uh, with, so, you know, I think I'm going to know what you're going to say, but what do the Cowboys have to do uh, to make sure they don't lose two in a row, which I think they haven't done in, in basically in two years? There's two ways you can handle this. If you win the, the coin toss, go out and score first. Okay. 
You know, everybody's saying it's going to be a shootout. Okay, that's fine. But if, if, if you get inside the 20 and it's fourth and three, now fourth and one, and you're on the 19, get the field goal. You got a sure thing kicker. Get the field goal. Because if you don't get the uh, first down, they're going, they going back the other way and score because they got momentum there at the crib. So I'm saying yeah. score. Everybody, like, it's going to be a shootout. You got to take chances. Don't take chances in the first half. You don't have to. Not in the first half. Now, in the second half, if you're down by more than 10, then you may have to panic a little bit. Listen, Rad, if you're down by more than 10, if you look, because if you look at the last few games over the last three weeks, teams have been down by seven, eight, 10 points going into the fourth and have won games. Don't yeah. panic. Right. Don't panic. But I, I hate. I, yeah. Go ahead. I hate when teams abandon everything they've done to get them there because, whoa, we're down by 10. We can't pass. We right. got to run. We can't run. We got to pass. Right, Whatever right. it is. So don't panic. And another thing. The defensive guys who are supposed to be your defensive studs has to show up in all phases yeah. of defense. Yeah. Not only pass rush. But versus the run, I would like to see Michael Parsons do more than just rush the passer. Yeah. I need for Demarcus Lawrence to show up big, run and pass. I need for uh, Flowers to show up big, veteran guy, been in big games before. I need for these guys to show up big. I need for our linebackers, Bell, uh, yeah. Uh, Clark, uh, like Evans, they have to show up big. It, it, you have to show up big. Our secondary will be all right if our front seven do their job. Okay. That that you know, show me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Rad. If I if if I if, 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 if I was still playing, and I came to your house, man. Only, only thing I would tell you is tell your wife to, to turn her head because I'm finna hike my leg in your yard, bro. I'm gonna tell you, wife, <laughs> tell your wife turn her head because I'm an alpha male. I'm coming to, I'm coming to I'm wet your coming. yard. I'm coming yeah. to wet your yard, bro. All right. So that's what they got to do. They got to go down to Miami. They all got to lift their legs. <laughs> yes, sir. There you go. <laughs> that's it. Either go simple. Hey, it's called drop yo. And lift, yo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. It's on that note that we will say Merry Christmas. Thank you for being a part of Let Me Tell You Something with me and Nate. Nate, man, it's been so much fun. I know we'll do it again next week, but uh, have a Merry Christmas. You and Michelle and the whole family. Same to you, Rad. You out there, what, walks of hatches? I got that right? I'm out here. Yeah, yes, I'm out here in the I'm sticks. I'm trying, like, you know, you wouldn't believe I'm trying to uh, tell uh different Wi-Fi companies to go out there and compete so we can have please. these services. <laughs> yeah, please. Get, get me some get me some uh, high-speed internet out here. I appreciate it. You got pull. <laughs> yeah. Love you, man. <laughs>